Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for September 2020 and it's a bit of a transition month as we say goodbye to the summer constellations and we welcome the return of the winter constellations. But coming up this month we have the end of Milky Way core season, we have the beginning of Aurora Borealis season, we welcome Orion back to the night sky, there is an occultation of Mars by the moon and we also have the spring equinox or the fall equinox if you're in the southern hemisphere. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are thousands of inspiring classes covering a huge range of creative topics such as graphic design, photography, videography, freelancing and more. I'm sure many of you watching this video will appreciate Ian Norman's class on nightscapes, an incredible introduction to all things landscape astrophotography, or how about James Manning's Astronomy for Starscapes which will help you make sense of the night sky and plan your astrophotographs with ease. I've been using Skillshare for just over a year now and I've used it for all sorts sorts of stuff. There are lots of good classes on freelancing and running a business and also Adobe Premiere classes that help me edit these videos. Premium members get access to all of those courses and you can try as many as you like and if you want to join along just follow the link in the video description and you get two months completely free of Skillshare Premium. Starting in the northern hemisphere evening skies you can see the Ursa Major it's nice and low on the horizon in an upright position so this is probably the best position to photograph it because you can include some foreground in there nice and easily and it's very recognizable when it's in its upright position and you'll see that Arcturus is now setting into the northwest and if we turn to the southwest you'll see the Milky Way core starts in the south west west but begins to set quite early on in the night so that's 11 pm and midnight and jupiter and saturn still just to the left of the milky way core jupiter fades a little bit from magnitude minus 2.4 to minus 2.2 saturn also fades a little bit from 0.3 to 0.5 and they both come out of their retrograde motion this month. So Jupiter comes out of retrograde motion on the 13th. Saturn comes out of retrograde motion on the 20th. So they'll begin moving eastward against the backdrop of stars again. And then if we look into the east, you'll see Mars rising in the evening skies, making its way into the southeast and eventually quite high in the south. Mars actually gets quite brighter, so it goes from minus 1.8 to minus 2.5, and Mars actually goes into retrograde motion this month. So as of September the 10th, Mars will begin moving westward against the backdrop of stars. So if I just zoom in and go back to the start of the month, You can see Mars is moving eastward compared to the stars and then on the 10th it stays sort of stationary when it reaches opposition and then starts to move westward against the backdrop of stars and it will continue its retrograde motion until November the 16th so if you wanted to try and document the loop of the retrograde motion uh, you'd have to continue shooting beyond sort of November the 16th. And then turning into the eastern skies in the morning, you'll see the return of Orion into the morning skies. And eventually Sirius makes it into the southeast and you've got the full winter circle, asterism of stars, return into the morning skies. And this year, or this month at least, the winter circle is joined by Venus which starts the month at a blazingly bright minus 4.3 and then ends the month at about minus 4.1 but Venus will continue dipping closer to the Sun uh, and rising later every morning but at the start of the month in the east and the southeast you've got the winter circle and Venus so lots of bright stars and bright objects there in the morning skies and then in the southern hemisphere evening skies facing south you'll see that the large and small Magellanic cloud 
spend the evening rising higher and higher and higher and you'll notice the Carina Nebula and the Crux and the Colsac Nebula are all dipping down to the horizon and if I zoom out you'll see that the Milky Way core starts the evening quite high and there's a good opportunity there for a, a Milky Way arch panorama because it's nice and low on the horizon so face it sort of west northwest you can get a nice little panorama there but as the night goes on the Milky Way core gets almost parallel with the horizon uh, and then begins to set in the southwest west again Jupiter and Saturn right next to the core Jupiter going from minus 2.4 to minus 2.2 and coming out of retrograde motion on the 13th and Saturn dimming from 0.3 to 0.5 and coming out of retrograde motion on the 20th and then if we look higher in the sky we see Mars nice and high Mars getting brighter this month going from minus 1.8 to minus 2.5 and it reaches opposition on the 13th but it begins its retrograde motion on the 10th so it will start moving westward against the backdrop of stars and then swinging over to the east again similar story to the northern hemisphere you'll see the winter circle rising into the east but of course upside down compared to what we're used to in the northern hemisphere and again there's another opportunity for the Milky Way arch, this time facing east. Uh, you've got Sirius at the apex of the arch, the Carina Nebula, the Crux, uh, the Vela region of the Milky Way as well, really good hydrogen alpha emission region. Uh, and then in the northeast, you've got the winter circle then, with Venus rising into the northeast, shining at a bright minus 4.3 at the start of the month, and then minus 4.1 at the end of the month. As for conjunctions this month, on the night of the 5th into the morning of the 6th, you'll see the moon, a big gibbous moon, right next to Mars, rising in the east and pretty much spending most of the night in the sky, making its way into the south and almost into the southwest before the sun comes up. Then on the 14th, you'll see a gorgeous crescent moon rising with Venus just before sunrise. One of my favorite opportunities to photograph a crescent moon and Venus together. And they will rise into the east. Getting quite high before the sun starts coming up. And then on the evening of the 24th, the moon will be right next to Jupiter and Saturn and of course the Milky Way core and they will be set in in the southwest between 10 and, and midnight. And the full moon this month is on the 2nd and in the Native American culture it is the harvest moon because it is of course the time of year when farmers harvest their crops. Now onto the special events for this month. For most of you in South America, on the 5th into the 6th, you'll be able to see an occultation of Mars by the moon. So the moon will pass in front of Mars. So as you can see from the map on screen, the event is visible for pretty much most of South America, but the exact time of the event will vary depending on where you are. So for example, in Rio de Janeiro, the event starts at 12.15 a.m. and lasts for about 20 minutes. But if you're in Bolivia, it starts at 10.30 p.m. on the 5th and lasts for about 1 hour and 20 minutes. So depending on exactly where you are, the start time and the end time will vary quite significantly. So I'll put a link in the video description down below so you can find out more information for your local area. And then in the Northern Hemisphere, we have the start of Aurora Borealis season or the Northern Lights. They've already been spotted in August and as the nights are getting longer and darker we will definitely see some more northern lights through September and there's usually heightened activity around the equinox as well which is of course on the 22nd where we have a day of equal day and equal night. Now Facebook groups are a good way of staying alert um, if you're in the UK I can highly recommend AUK Aurora UK run by James Rowley Hill he posts daily updates about any activity on the sun and potential for aurora 
uh, that coming night. So these groups are a really good way and a good social way to hunt the aurora and make sure you don't miss out on any activity. The website space where the live.com is really, really good as well. There's lots of free data there from the satellites to orbit Earth and detect any activity before it reaches Earth. And if you haven't got a clue what you're looking at in the data, there's plenty of good articles on the website to help break it down. And eventually you get used to knowing what to look for in the data that might indicate that Aurora is going to happen in the coming hours. There are a ton of different apps out there. I can highly recommend Glendale Aurora app. It's not available in the App Store. You have to go to the website on your phone and there's instructions there about how to save the app to your home screen and you can set up notifications. And one of the really good things with the app is that there's a live map. So people who use the app will send in live reports of whether they can see Aurora, whether they can't see Aurora, or whether it's cloudy in their local region. So that's a really nice live way to stay on top of things. Uh, and even though it's a sort of UK-based app, it also works in Iceland and Norway uh, and those countries as well. And that's about all I've got for you this month, guys. So on to the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target, a challenge for people to photograph, upload their images to Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag Wittens. And I pick my three favorites to win a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Lightroom Astro Workflow presets. Second wins a What's in the Night Sky t-shirt. And then in first place, you will get a photo view guidebook of your choice. Last month, the subject was Milky Way. And I also mentioned that I'll be keeping an eye out for Perseid Meteor images. And well, you'll see shortly. But in third place was this image from B. Pepping in Tennessee of the Milky Way core uh, and a big lone tree there. I just love the editing. It just really feels like night. It's nice and sharp. There's lots of detail. There's not much noise in there. And it's just got a very soft, ethereal feel to it. And I, I just really love this sort of nighttime feel to the image. So congratulations. You will win my Lightroom presets. In second place was this image from Constantine Themelis. And just a really otherworldly image. You almost feel like you're on another planet, a very barren land, another planet. And I just love the, the color balance, the white balance is just spot on. The sky is nice and neutral. It's not too blue or too warm. The sky is very dark and neutral and the colors of the Milky Way, in my opinion, are just perfect. And then in first place, it really wasn't a difficult decision, was this image by Thomas Slavinsky or slavinsky.art of the Milky Way just arching across the sky and the sky just absolutely full of Perseid meteors. And it's an incredible piece of work. And I highly recommend you go and check out his page and give him a follow because he really doesn't have that many followers considering the work that he puts out. So congratulations, Tom. I'll be in touch to find out which photo view guidebook you would like. And then this month, let's, hmm. Planets, let's go with planets. We've got Jupiter and Saturn next to the Milky Way. We've got Mars uh, going into retrograde motion and dominating the skies all night. We've also got Venus in the morning skies. So let's go with planets. All right, thank you for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime, any soon, I wish you good luck in clear skies.